Hi, hey fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we're back with another reaction. It's movie time. It's playing, Dan. This time we are watching Law Abiding Citizen. Hell yeah, we are. First time for you. Yes, it is. All right. Well, I hope you enjoy this one. It's a really good thriller. Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. All right, oh, whoever you are, hold on. It's nighttime, and I got my family here. Oh, he's not dead. Oh! No. Oh, oh, oh. Man, just take it and go. Don't terrorize the family. You can't fight fate. Oh, oh. God. What was the point of that? I don't know, but he sees your face. Oh, Jesus. You kill him both? Oh, no. What about the daughter? What is he doing? He's doing that in front of her. It's cool. Kids like me. Oh, God. No. You sick bastard. Dude, that makes me so angry. I got that just a basic robbery. What was the point of everything else? Where are we on this kid's case? Oh, I kicked it down the jukebox. You wouldn't want to jeopardize your 95% conviction. It's right? actually 96. Wow, that's pretty high. That is. Shelton case, where are we? Let's make the deal. They killed a little girl. You could win this case. No, can't take that chance. What deal is there to make? Fry his ass. Yeah, punish the crime. Darby has agreed to testify against Ames. Ames will go to death row. Darby will plead guilty to murder. And what degree? Third. What? Third? It's at least a second. I don't, I don't understand. I'm, I'm sorry. The judge ruled that the DNA was inadmissible. How is that even possible? He saw their faces. They killed my little girl, mate. You blacked out, Glass. Your testimony won't be reliable. But the both of them are guilty, especially Darby. You know that. It's not what you know, Clyde. It's what you can prove in court. Unfortunately, yes. God damn. But they both need to be there. Yeah. I made the deal. He made the deal? How could you do that? You, he didn't consent to the deal. Can you do that? Apparently so. Listen, I, I know you don't think it right now, but this is a victory for us. It's a hollow victory. He's lost his family. I trust that we can move forward with Mr. Ames's trial. Are you married? Excuse me? Are you married? Go f yourself. Wish ill for no man, but Ames deserves to suffer for what he did. Yeah, right. I mean, you can't fight fate, right? So the guy who just sat there and stole stuff is taking all the blame. That guy's gonna serve five years. So you'll be seeking the death penalty. For Rupert Ames, we will be. And for Darby? He has pled guilty to murder, but he is a cooperating witness. Unbelievable that you made a deal for this. Mm -hmm. Do not shake his hand. Really? It's nice when the system works, right? It worked for she you. Didn't him at all. I can't believe you did that, man. And he saw you do it. Mm-hmm. Now you look crooked in front of the husband. I feel so horribly bad for him. Not that what that guy did, he deserves to die. Can I talk to my daughter for a little bit? No. <laughs> I'm glad you get to. So you're sitting here enjoying your daughter while your client just yeah, lost you're... his and his wife, which no ill will to your family, man, ever. Man, you did not help his. Ten years later, hmm, what could possibly happen? You going to your daughter's recital this afternoon? I thought you were going to order the DVDs. The video's not the same, Nick. Mom, it's okay. Dad's got to work, I know. Then what is Dad doing today? Lock up bad guys. Mm. I think Dad makes deals. Yes, he's a deal maker. He locks up bad guys for a few years. That's about all he does. Yeah. What's it like? Like watching somebody fall asleep. Except for the not waking up part. Ten years waiting for that? Jesus. That's usually how it goes, though. Sometimes longer, yeah. Yeah. Sarah, your legs are looking real good in those heels. What are you doing, Rose? Ames has no family. I felt like someone should be here for him. Free. She's been a lawyer for ten years and she ain't been to one of these yet? It's not something that she should go to often, I guess. I should have never been there. But I swear to God, I didn't kill those people. Romance down here today. Oh, man, but if you knew that was wrong while you were doing it, you should have stopped the guy. Yeah, but he's got a point, though. He didn't actually jam the knife in there. No, but he Nor didn't. Or was it part of the plan? And he didn't do anything to stop it, either. That could have worked to his favor, maybe. Maybe. That's a lot of chemical. That seems like a lot, doesn't it? Oh, he's not screaming. <gasps> I stand corrected. Oh, yeah. What the hell is going on? I don't here? know. Oh my god. It's like corrosive, whatever yeah. it is. That made it hurt. Good lord. 
That's not something going wrong. That's that's foul play. Hey, you mess up that badly. So, somebody killed the guy you were trying to kill? Hey, look. Well, yep, there you O'Brien, <laughs> good to see it. Objectives. Got to stop the back of the machine. Check it out. Let me see it. Can't find fate. Mm. Mm. During the home invasion, Ames' accomplice said to one of the Vicks, you can't fight fate. I can't remember his name. Can't remember his name, really? Of course not. You know how many deals he's made since then? <laughs> Probably quite a few. Oh, wow. aren't you a winner since you got out? Well, that would explain his actions a little bit. Yeah. Class Darby, that's strike three for you. Coke on the table, bitch on the floor, life in prison. Mm. That's what it takes? <laughs> Somebody's watching this. Is this a joke? You know. <laughs> You're gonna run out there with the gun in front of all these cops. I guess. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 that's gonna help you. you. This is a good way to get killed. Why the prince off the gun? Get rid of it. No, why are you doing <laughs> you this? Know what? I want to keep you out of prison. Somebody's watching him while he's doing this. Yeah, they are. Break the fuck up! Let's go! <laughs> really? Took him a long time to react. Take it easy. Let's go. Let's go! Is that Gerard Butler? Uh-huh. Oh, he really set this up, didn't he? My wife, my, my little girl, I'll never see them again. Oh, oh, oh. I am impressed. You, you know, know why I'll, I'll never see my wife, wife and little girl, girl again? Because mm -hmm. you took them from me. Oops. <gasps> oh, <laughs> cheeky slag. He's been planning this for years. Oh, yeah. Tetro. Oh. To toxin. Oh. That's interesting. He built that into the gun. It's isolated from the liver of a Caribbean pufferfish. You can't move, but you feel everything. I thought pufferfish killed you, but I guess I, I guess not. Absolutely nothing to blunt the pain. And you're about to experience more of that than you could ever fucking imagine. He's gonna torture the shit out of him. He has it coming. So you don't bleed out, because you may be here a while. Whatever kind of person he was before, he's not that person anymore. It was like it turned into Saw all of a sudden. I know what it feels like to be helpless. Just like when I watched you slaughter my whole family. Now you can't fight fate. Those words came back to haunt you. Big time. You like it? Oh my god. Yeah, I didn't want you to miss anything. And he put his family up there. I don't think your family would want this, but still. No, but I understand the sentiment. Yeah. It'll be the last thing you ever see is I cut off every single one of your fucking limbs. I don't feel sorry for you, man. I don't, this is gonna be awkward to watch. Oh, oh yeah. God, yeah, it's gonna. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Thanks for the car. <laughs> Wait, you actually robbed a police officer? I'll be damned. <laughs> <laughs> you found him. What's left, left of him? Yeah, good God. Yeah, she did dismember him. It's a grisly scene. Some kind of a horror movie. Good news, counselor. We found Darby. I gotta say, though, he's looked better. <laughs> you think? Nobody's gonna miss him. No. What do we know about him? He owned the warehouse where they found Darby. He owned the warehouse. He holds two dozen patents. He liquidated most of his wealth to buy some industrial properties. Somebody is playing Saw here. <laughs> really? He's gotta know they're coming for him. You would think, right? So he didn't do a very good job of hiding his, his identity here. Yeah. Hey, he's going buck naked, huh? Why not? Well, here, let me give you a show as you arrest me. <laughs> I don't understand why, but... I, I don't get it either. Just trying to confuse the police? I don't know. I guess they decided no on that one. Okay. He's interested in plea deals. Why not? Let's see if he offers him one. Yeah. Is this guy a lawyer? He's an engineer. Those look like legal textbooks to me. Yeah, yeah they sure shit are. Ten years, he's had plenty of time to plan shit. Can I help you? Package for the Rice family. Mom, the video for my recital came. Tell me he didn't send a recording to them. Why would he do that? Oh, no. That'd be messed up. She wants to watch it. Mm. She's not waiting, is she? Oh, no, he did. Why would you do that? Come on, you had a little girl. You had a little girl of your own. Why would you do that? That's just messed up. There's no sense in that at all. What I'm about to tell you, I don't want anybody else to hear. I'm a father. I have a little girl. And what you did, bravo. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Did you murder Clarence Darby? I wanted him dead. He killed my wife and child. You arranged both of those murders. Yes, I planned it in my head over and over again. It took me a long time. Ten years. <laughs> mm -hmm. You might want to cancel your 1230 lunch with Judge Roberts. He knows his schedule. Mm. We have your confession. See, in our profession, we consider that a slam dunk. Think back. What did I say? 
Did I want it to kill Clarence Darby? Yeah, sure. What father wouldn't? That I planned it over and over again in my head? Mm-hmm. Context. Yeah. He's been reading law books for 10 years. Mm -hmm. We know you did it. Well, it's not what you know. It's what you can prove in court. Didn't you tell me that once? Mm -hmm. Yep. Now you're the one who makes deals with murderers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will give you a confession. You just have to give me something in return. Since you are a murderer, what might that be? Third degree. A bed. <laughs> I want a nice new one for myself. Oh. <laughs> That's a heck of a deal. Yeah. Let me think about that for a second. How about, uh, fuck no. Okay. It's the easiest deal you're ever going to get. Yeah. He's messing with him so hard. Why did you tell him no? He doesn't make those kind of decisions. Take your ego out of it, Nick. We need a confession and a mattress for a murder confession. That's a pretty good deal. Yes, exactly. Now you just look stupid. <laughs> I need to finish up here and then I will be home. The things on this video, Nick, I have never seen anything like it. This motherfucker sent a DVD to my house of him killing Darby. What? I'm sorry she saw that. That's pretty messed up, actually. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, all hey, the prisoners yeah. got to watch him carry it in anyway. Yep. Kind of small, though. Yeah, well, so is the... Yeah, God. that's fair. Nice bed. Thank you. It's a single. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it work. <laughs> he bought nine properties under his own name, then he transferred them to some corporation in Panama. He's covered his bases. Mm -hmm. The state requested bail be denied, Your Honor. Mr. Shelton, do you have anything to say? Your Honor, I'm a law-abiding citizen. I'm just a regular guy. You are anything but regular. <laughs> I find it highly prejudicial, even constitutionally offensive, to keep me detained without bail. Haven't we seen the result of such violations? Case in point, Dave B. McDonough. Oh, this guy came prepared. <laughs> he sounds like a lawyer. Yep. In my opinion, the state has failed to establish a compelling basis for its motion, and I will grant bail. Your so Honor, I will caution you not to do that. I'm the judge, not you. Yeah. Excuse me? You were about to let me go. This is why we're here in the what first are you doing? place. You think I don't remember who you are, lady? Oh, she's the judge. Mm -hmm. Apparently, I just killed two people. And you were about to let me walk right out that door. Mm. I feed you a couple of bullshit legal precedents, and there you go. You jump on it like a bitch in heat. Oh, damn. Good lord. He's my hero right now. <laughs> this is... Bail denied. There you go. I bet you take it up the fucking ass. <laughs> Good wow. lord. He's got a valid point, but I'm trying to figure out what the play is here. I saw a movie today. My daughter saw the same movie. It's pretty sadistic to sit yeah. at his house. An odd way of going about that. That was you on video killing Clarence Darby, wasn't it? That was me. Clyde Shelton on the video killing Clarence Darby. Not good enough, Clyde. Oh, you didn't need him before. I took his fingers with bolt cutters, his balls with a hacksaw. Good oh. God. You showed all that on that tape? What now? I go home. You go to prison. You know, the righteous prospering, the wicked suffering. Oh, thanks. I had another confession to me. Call the priest. What? You would have to give me something in return. What are you messing with him about now? Rina Del Frisco's. For lunch, I would love a 20-ounce porterhouse steak with all the trimmings. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have something to bargain with. Would the life of Bill Reynolds suffice? Who's Bill Reynolds? Who the fuck is Bill Reynolds? <laughs> That's my question. Darby's attorney. Could yeah. Mm. Reported him missing. Oh, no. Yeah, he's been... He's been super busy. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you exactly where he is. Just bring me my meal and my music at 1 o'clock exactly. 1 o'clock, Nick. What's going to happen at 1 o'clock? He's going to get himself some Del Frisco's. That's what's going to happen. I love this guy. <laughs> Inmates don't have access to the time. We tell them what time it is. I don't care if he has a Rolex or not. We need to stick to the timeline that was agreed to. Check it again. That's stupid. Blood's on their hands, then. Mm -hmm. It's probably why he's specific about the time he wants them to screw up. Right? Porterhouse steak seared medium rare. <laughs> you want to share? You know, you'd better. <laughs> Gilly. And hey, what time is it? It's one away. Well, that's disappointing, Warden. I mean, how can you expect me not to fuck with you? You can't even be honest with me. Mm, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on, Clyde. Take your time. 39 degrees, 57 minutes, 4 seconds north. You gave him coordinates. You better hurry next. If anybody's watched but the Warden, you're already late. This is why you show up at the exact time. Yeah, don't mess with people that have hostages. <laughs> Ooh, he's playing the Who? Okay, good song. So I suppose if I don't share this with you, you're gonna get the fuck up, and I'm gonna split your whole fucking skull into. How about that? <laughs> okay, you can have some steak. You like steak? Mm. Steak and some steak. Mm. I have a big piece mm. for you. There you go. You're lucky he has such an understanding roommate. <laughs> well, I think he's gonna like not mess with the guy who's getting free shit brought into his cell. Fair enough. There we go. I got a few bros back home. You have a boyfriend in here, I know. 
<laughs> well, you never know. Well, you did say I had a nice bed. <laughs> so. Yeah. He says he buried him alive. Oh god! Probably just enough air to last. Yep. That's why he said one o'clock. Probably suffocated eight minutes ago. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh. He kept the T-bone. Now he's got a shank. How did the guards let that slip? He's got just rounds. He's gone, Nick. He's gone. Damn. Wanna take a shot at this? Not to use it. Oh! Good God. Why? Holy shit! He just messed him up! Jesus. Good God. What was the point of that? The bloody mess in there. I'm thoroughly confused about what this guy is trying to do. Yeah. I need a shower over here. He said he needed a shower. Air was rigged to shut off at 1.15. If Shelton would have got his lunch on time, he'd still be alive. He wants to play games, we can play games too. That's why you're getting in trouble, because you're playing games. Hey Nick, it's Sarah. Listen, Clyde murdered his cellmate. The warden is furious. He's moving him to solitary. He's got to have an end game here somewhere. I just don't know what it is. We found Rivers. I had to call his wife and tell her that her husband had been buried alive. Well, justice should be harsh, Nick. But especially for those who denied it to others. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. We made a deal, you and I. That's a pretty important principle I'd like you to start learning, Nick. Keeping your word. You think your wife and daughter would feel good about you killing in their name? Don't pretend to care about his wife and daughter. I don't hate you, but don't use them against him. Well, he's just trying to find an inn. Yeah. He's not going to find one. <laughs> We're meeting someone. Who might that be? Someone who does some really nasty shit so we can live the American dream. Mm. Spy shit, huh? CIA, sounds like. Shelton was a spy? Or... Look, spies are a dime a dozen. He's a think tank type guy. His specialty was low-impact kinetic operations. Wow. <laughs> we kill people. He figured out how to do it without ever being in the same room. Mm, that's impressive. So no wonder he's so good at it. One time we're tasking this tricky target. Clyde develops a Kevlar thread, put in a necktie. Two days later, Mrs. Bad Guy comes home, finds Mr. Bad Guy dead on the bathroom tile, choked to death. Wow. Dang. <laughs> that's impressive. Yeah, it is. He's a born tactician. Every move that he makes, it means something. That cellmate that he killed, you think that was random? That's a pawn being moved off the board. How interesting, huh? So the point is, unless you're actually giving somebody the death sentence who's earned it, you're not doing your job. I guess not. I had no idea he was he was that intelligent. Like, I didn't either. I just, assumed, tank. Yeah, I just assumed he was a, a solo engineer or something. You want me to violate his God-given civil rights in the name of some murky sense of the greater good. Is that the gist of it, gentlemen? Yes. We are. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. She's like, uh, no. Okay. Huh, she's good. Oh. I'm game. Just don't plan on it sticking for long. Wow. You're incredibly flexible. You really are. <laughs> Hello? Oh! Oh, crap. What the hell? How did that get in her phone? Good God. Hold on, did that just happen? <laughs> yes, it did. The cell phone shot her? How did you do that? The same way he did the tie thing. He knew how to rig it up. How'd you get it to her? Yeah. So you're killing judges now. Lessons not learned in blood are soon forgotten. And mm. vengeance keeps you warm at night. That's what you think this is about? Vengeance? You haven't been paying attention. You don't think that I watch you go to work every morning, 8 a.m.? Oh, shit. No, I could have slaughtered you or your family anytime I wanted, Nick. You even think about touching my family? Oh, he's thought about it. Yeah. You at war with the whole world? It's not going to bring anybody back? No, I'm at war with this broken thing. Down with the system here. Rage against the machine. Yeah. <laughs> I still have faith in you, so I'm going to give you one last chance. Release me and drop all charges by 6 a.m. Or what? Or I kill everyone. Holy shit. Who's everyone? Everyone else involved. But man, that's a hell of a deal to make. He's not going to be able to make that. Mm -mm. And if you let him go, you're pretty much doing exactly what he's complaining about. Avoiding justice for a convenient outcome. But they, you know they're going to talk about it. Look, they're bringing everybody to safety. You think he hasn't thought of this? He probably knows exactly where they are. Yeah. My friend found this tiny loophole. Grants us access to Clyde's corporate expenses. It's something. It's a start. Would you do it the same way now? Would you still cut a deal for Derby? We have to make choices. But did you make the right choice? We made the right choice. No, you did not. Does it feel like you made the right choice? <laughs> I'm 35, Nick. And there are things, there are possibilities that I'm not going to have now. But I just want to make sure that I gave up those things for more than just a high conviction rate. She gave him a chance to have a family and everything so that she can go and do what she believes in. Mm -hmm. I don't blame her for questioning him on that. Yeah. Come on, look at them all looking at the clock. <laughs> they haven't slept. Well. Take a couple of hours, go home, come back, and we'll get a fresh start. It doesn't matter. He said 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. Your timetable is gone. Now he can't disable whatever he set up to kill you all. Yeah. I don't know how this one's going to turn out, Nick. 
I'm gonna stop and that's how it's gonna turn out. <laughs> nope. Nope. That's three. What are you looking for? Get out of the car, it's unlocked. She's panicking. Oh no. Oh damn. She was actually not a bad person either. She wasn't. This marks the first time in the history of the United States where government officials have been systematically murdered. Found this radio beacon. Sent an arming signal to the car bombs when they went through the gate. Unbelievable. <laughs> These guys look so stupid. And there's nothing they can do about it. How'd you know which cars they were going to use? Maybe he's been watching him. Uh -huh. He's been watching them. He knows that they drive. He knows where they go. And when he can't see him, he takes a break and reads a law book. Yeah. We have him locked up and he's still killing people? Yep. Yeah. You boys sure fuck this one up. You ain't kidding. <laughs> nope. Mayor, you have my word. We are gonna stop this guy. He's not gonna hurt anybody else. Yeah, that wouldn't count. Don't make that. promises you can't keep. You know to think, all this could have been avoided if this guy had just put Darby away for life. But no, he wanted a high conviction rate. They're taking my deal. Six fucking innocent people. Is that how you wanna play? Who said they were innocent? What if I had said, well, let's take them to trial, huh? And we might have lost. Didn't even try. You could have walked out of that core and with your head held high. I could have lived with that. I could have killed him on my own time. Yeah, he would have done it. <laughs> yeah. I'm just getting warmed up. I'm going to bring the whole fucking diseased, corrupt temple down on your head. It's got to be biblical. Damn. He's going to root out all the corruption. Yeah. Did we bring this all on ourselves? Absolutely not. You don't actually believe that, do you? Look at all the security they still need around him. Yeah, this guy's always... locked in a hole and he's got y'all scared shitless. And it's still not enough. <laughs> what the hell was that? Was that? Yeah. <laughs> what is this? Who's operating this thing? <laughs> it's a robot. Robotic tank from the looks of it. I've got to have a cannon on it. Yeah. Good lord. He's got a 50 cal on that Jesus. thing. Probably bought from the Panamanians. Look at that thing. It's Johnny Five. <laughs> That's Johnny F*** you. Is what it is. <laughs> Oh, he had an oh. EMP on it, too? Oh, God. It's got everything. Sitting ducks. Holy shit. Now you see it. Good God. Yeah, they did. Good God, it's tearing that car apart. Well, somebody's moving. Yeah, he's a, he's not getting out of there alive. Oh. Well, this sucked. This next level. Mm-hmm. One of my friends was just murdered. More than one of my friends. What I should do is fire you. Yes, you should. I resign. Is that your real answer? I think that's best. So you're running from the problem now? No. <laughs> As of now, you're acting district attorney. Well, look what it took for him to become the DA. You said to kill off all the competition? Yes. yes. I, Nicholas Rice. I, Nicholas Rice. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support. He's already lying. I gotta say, if you had done that in the first place, we wouldn't be here. That contraption that killed Cantrell, it was a weaponized bomb disposal robot. Mm. Damn thing had video, night vision, you name it. Oh, I think he's saving you for last. Nah. <laughs> he could have killed you right there. Something a friend is helping me out with. Who's your friend? Oh, it's Chester. I think it's Chester. That was her boyfriend. I know that, but what's so special about him? I don't know. How'd you get this? His assets there? He's got some money. Oh, Buddy Chester was able to get into the Pan Panamanian government mm. and get that information. Okay. So that must have been her contact that she was talking about. Yeah. So now you can pinpoint where all his properties are. Why that matters, I don't know. You're saying Clyde owns this place? Are you going to do what I think you're going to do? What about his civil rights? Fuck his civil rights. <laughs> so you're going to break the law <laughs> again? I just swore on the Bible and I said, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Only eight hours ago, I just got sworn in as a... Fucking DA. <laughs> and this is why the system was so corrupt. Remember this? From outside the house. Oh. Oh, he's got an escape the, tunnel. Hold on. There's no way. Into the prison? Into solitary. <laughs> <laughs> you cheeky monkey. He tunneled all that in ten years. We could have paid some people to help him. Cash. That looks like a cash tunnel. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Call some Panamanian drug lords. Say, hey, you guys got drug tunnels, right? I need some help with one. You're down here watching Infowars? <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. What? You got enough explosives to level a city block in there. Mm-hmm. There's the exit. It's an exit. There's another one. He's got it under all the solitary cells. Tunnel into every oh, God. cell. Well, yeah, because you didn't know which one you'd be thrown into, yeah. so you got to be prepared. He's probably not even in there. He's off on a mission. Mm -hmm. 
You know the shit of it is he could have been in another he's country. Not here. If he's not there, then where is he? Before they'd ever know he was gone. Oh yeah. <laughs> he is. The CID, please. Yeah, sure. How long has he been working here? I don't know. Something going on tonight? The mayor. He's here for the mayor. Mm-hmm. He tapped into the prison cameras. <laughs> Jesus. He's got cameras everywhere. <laughs> this guy's watching the whole city. Yeah. Uh-huh. He's an employee. Mm. Bringing home a steady paycheck. He's a city hall. Sorry for the inconvenience, sir. No, don't worry about it. You better be safe than sorry, right? Yeah, way to blend in. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, you'll be sorry. I'm gonna assume that Simtex or some kind of chemical to make everybody breathe something. Mm. I don't know. Where's the tactical team? The new bomb squad. You're looking at it. You? You? Well, whatever. Just don't go any, mini, miny, mo when you're looking at the wires. What's going on in here tonight? Security meeting with all the brass. Mm, all the brass, huh? What floor is this? That's the fifth floor, sir. Directly below the caucus room. Mm -hmm. We catch this motherfucker red-handed, we gotta take him alive. Why? That's a good question. What are you gonna get out of him now? <laughs> right there. Stand back, don't touch anything. That's exactly my first instinct. And now he's gone. Good job, security. I think he's gonna hit a drive-thru after this. <laughs> Come back to Del Frisco's. <laughs> He's in solitary eating a steak. <laughs> uh-huh. Yep. That's a bomb. He put a whole six-pack in there. That's an eight bomb, basically. This shit'll take out the entire floor and the one above us. Looks like it's triggered by this cell phone here. Well, at least he's not taking out a whole block. I'm calling the mayor's security. We can't. He sees him evacuating, he will detonate this thing. We don't tell the mayor anything. Yeah, what she didn't know won't hurt her. Oh, I thought that thing was going to drive him down there, and he's like, ah, my favorite part of this. <laughs> <laughs> been nice. I don't care what laws we have to bend. You're... I am sure that there is a provision of the Homeland Security Act that we can activate. You are just not learning anything here. No, you're not. You're trying to bend the rules again and again and again instead of just playing by them. Clyde. Ah. Uh. Nick, I wasn't expecting company. I would have cleaned up a little. Well, you are a janitor, so... <laughs> You play this, Clyde. You play this real good. I'm glad you finally get to appreciate some of the effort that I put into all of this. I appreciate it. Pretty ingenious, yeah. So what do you suggest, Nick? Uh, make another deal? I don't make deals with murderers anymore, Clyde. Uh, you did learn something good. If you go through with this, Clyde, it's a decision you'll have to live with for the rest of your life. That's the plan. I'm sorry, Nick. Like I said, Clyde. It's a decision you have to live with for the rest of your life, which I figure by now is about 25 more seconds. Oh, touche. You checkmated him. They, they put the bomb in his cell. Oh. <laughs> yep, there it is. <laughs> Got one over on you. The last one. You did good work, man. Yes, you did. How weird saying that about the justice system, but it didn't work for him, and it's still not working. The whole point of this movie is prove that it doesn't work. And I'm sorry to hell that you lost your family like that. That's a beautiful shot. That's a great shot. My God. It doesn't matter to him. He's just going to see him. Yep. You're one man against the whole system. He almost succeeded. I hope he changes as a result. If he does what he's saying, quits making deal with murderers, hopefully things will be better. And he still has his family. He's making time for him, too. Yeah. So he's already changed in that regard. Mm hmm That's a lesson he certainly learned here. From Clyde. Yeah, from Clyde. Appreciate the time you have with your family. You never know how, uh, when it's going to get snubbed out. Yep. Great movie. Mm-hmm. Well done. Very well done. Good drama. Yeah. It's just wow. That was fantastic, wasn't it? That was good. Very intelligent movie. I really liked it. Oh, yeah. It's so intelligent, it stumped you. Yeah. It stumped I, you this time. I really had no idea what he was going for. And then when they explained his background about being in the CIA, it's like, oh, so this guy has planned out every little move. Yeah, he has. For 10 years? Yeah. You're not stopping him. No, that was well done on his part. Well written story there, too. Mm -hmm. So the, the only thing I wish was different was when they found out that he had like a secret tunnel under the prison. I was kind of hoping it was something more complicated than that. But like maybe he actually had an accomplice and he had people out there who agreed with him ideologically and were helping him commit this crime i think i i think i see where you're going with that mm -hmm. i can understand why i don't think you'd want to get people involved in what you're trying to do because he believed in what he was doing but right. i mean trying to recruit other people to your cause is difficult 
And to be fair, they probably would have been a liability too, because that's people who could have turned on you at any time, or you know, you never know who you're gonna be able to trust. But at the same time, you know, we're sitting here watching this movie, saying, "Hey, you know, we agree with what you're doing here, at least in principle." Certainly. You gotta imagine there's other people out there who would help him with that and would actually see to it that this thing succeeded. I think you're right. Granted, anybody that helped him, if, especially if they survive, would have just been labeled a terrorist by the government. Assuming they, they ever found out, because, I mean, he did a really good job of pointing everything on himself, even from the start. True. At the very least, it's like there didn't have to be tunnel rats down there helping him. He could have just had people planted all over the system. Yeah. Just working there. Mm hmm Well, in a way, he did, because we saw with the um, with at the end there where he was working as the janitor, you could see on the little thing that he had like three people scheduled to go in and work. So he obviously owned the company that was servicing City Hall. That's so, a good point. So he was using people and getting in and getting access to all his information. Well, those three people were probably him. I don't know how that's going to work, but they okay. Could've, they could have just been him. All right, because he, he's got, you saw all the disguises he had. He could have come in as anybody. So he just walks in, climbs out the window, puts on another disguise, walks in again. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> he's charging the, the government for three people and it's only him doing all the work well you gotta fund this operation somehow the tunnel's not gonna dig itself come on <laughs> you gotta go yeah. into three three uh, i don't know how many separate actually uh solitary confinement cells yeah come on <laughs> well here's a question what if another prisoner was thrown into solitary and they accidentally stumbled across Found this it's thing <laughs> they would have been like hey, hey, hey. i'm getting out of here so long suckers <laughs> what's Gerard butler gonna do he's gonna be like oh you found my tunnel pal <laughs> probably I don't know. That's a good question. There's got to be some secret way of accessing it from the prison side that only he would be able to figure out, right? right. Speaking of the solitary, let's talk about that for a second. Mm -hmm. You saw what he did to get in there. Mm -hmm. He's trying to change the system to work for people, for the betterment of people. Yeah. I understand him having to get into solitary so that he can move around and make his plan work. Yeah. But he had to kill somebody to do it. It seemed a bit much. I mean, I imagine just starting a fight with somebody would have got you in there, right? You would think? Yeah. Or even just, you no. Know, constant disobedience of the guards when they tell you to do something. There's got to be easier ways to get in other than straight up killing another prisoner. No, you could have just told him, give me my own cell in solitary. I don't want to talk to people. That's the deal. No, he asked for I, a bit. Actually, that would have been nice too, but then the thing is, you don't know what arrangement they were going to make. They could have put him in another prison cell that wasn't actually a solitary cell, he and then he would have had to prepare for that and had like openings into every cell in the prison. Yeah, that was a pretty calculated decision. He probably knew he'd have to do that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but it was bad on the guards too for letting that actual bone get in there. It's like everything should be considered a damn weapon. I can say you guys were smart enough to only give him a sport, but you didn't think about the fact that he had his big old bone and it was perfect for stabbing somebody. I'm telling you, he had a he had a predator claw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that thing was effective. That really was. I was surprised at how like much of a tip it had on it too. Mm -hmm. The other thing too, smart as all of this scene when we were watching it when you kind of reflect on it some parts of it kind of like eh, that might not have worked out the way that you wanted it to especially there the opening sequence where he gets darby out of his home and gets him into that police car the whole time i was sitting there thinking okay one how do you know he's going to escape by running across the rooftops and two what's to stop him from having get gotten shot by the police before he got that far the rooftops i can't i don't know i think a lot of this was just luckily it worked out for the story there mm -hmm. he probably would have been prepared for whatever he did mm -hmm. he probably worked out those scenarios he can go downstairs he can go upstairs he can go out the back he's got options and i gotta be ready for any of those options kind of thing so he could have done anything i mean i suppose if he's got good enough surveillance he can probably lead the guy away although i'm not sure if he would actually be able to track him like that probably yeah i don't know unless he had a drone following him i didn't see any I didn't, drones i didn't see one either i don't know he was what because because it's like i don't know what you're watching him from in mm -hmm. that car i get what you're saying mm -hmm. it doesn't bother me really but but i see where you i see your point there so. and then too with the incident where he killed off all those other attorneys like who's to say they didn't create another safe house somewhere else and then your bomb wouldn't work because you never would have gotten activated because the whole thing was that he had a proximity sensor on the gateway there where they end up parking their cars. So, like, what if they realize, oh, well, this guy thinks he's so smart. Let's put everybody in a different location. Well, because he could get out of a cell at any time. Right. He had surveillance of the entire prison. Mm -hmm. He could see where they're all parking. That's what I'm saying, though. What if they decide to shack everybody up somewhere else? Oh, I'm sure. You, oh, like you mean at a safe house, like you're saying. Yeah, oh, like what if they're on the Like other, a hotel or something. What if they're on the complete other side of the city he has to find a way to get there find out where they are in the first place get everything set up and have it ready to go by 6 a.m i imagine he has the ability to track their cars 
and wherever they're going because he watches all these folks, mm -hmm. he knows where they are at all times. So he probably just has to see where one vehicle's at and he'll find the rest. Find the rest. And then he can put his proximity alert, uh, alarm out there after it lights out mm -hmm. and bam, job done, right? Planted because all the bombs are planted under their cars. Right. So but the sensor was applied to the gateway where they came in to park. Yes. So if, if the point is that it activates when they drive in, he would have had to know where they were going ahead of time. He probably would have just had a different contingency. Because he's probably prepared for whatever move they make. Mm -hmm. He's making these moves anticipating that they're going to that they're going to make the next move. He's he's calculating out moves, you know? Right. So they could have done any number of things and he would have been ready for it. Is why whatever they did in this movie, that if if they would have gone somewhere, we would have seen that. Uh, maybe so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's just the way it is. It's like, the, I think the whole point is you think you know what this guy's going to do and you don't. Right. You know, he made them go where he wanted them to go. Yeah. So up until the point we found out about his CIA background, I had no idea where this was going. And it's like, oh, this guy, he's a planner. Yeah, that was a, that was an important thing to know at the beginning. Yeah. But I'm also still confused. What was the point of him being naked when they arrested him? Fam, let us know if you know. I Because I don't either. I don't think that proved anything, did it? I don't know. He could have helicoptered for him, too, while he was at it. Maybe so. Just uh, wanted to show off his uh, virtus. Mmm. Just uh, being a little bit manly there before he goes to prison, huh? Absolutely. Nothing more manly than showing yourself to the world. <laughs> Again, you know, like we were saying during the movie, you know, I really appreciate the message that he was trying to send there. Because he's right. You know, someone who sits there and he, you know, he kills your wife, your child, he's doing stuff to your wife. He tries to kill you, doesn't succeed, fortunately. I mean, how do you sit there and say, yeah, we're going to give this guy a few years in prison? I don't know. It doesn't... Oh, and, and, and I know it bothers you, mm -hmm. because it bothers me, too. You know these guys murdered people. Yeah. You practically let them scot-free. It's like, you, you see that he's been stabbed, she's been stabbed. I don't know what happened to the daughter. She's also been... Well, we know she's dead. It's effed up enough that he had to watch it happen. But yeah. still. And then whatever happened to the daughter there. All this happened, and there's red tape in front of them. Yeah. That's that's really the biggest problem, is that they've created way too much red tape that stops them from serving justice, but they're also doing things for their own personal interests. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that kind of made me mad, too. Because, you know, the bureaucracy is terrible. You know, I can see how, under certain circumstances, it, it it's useful for saving somebody who actually is innocent. But in this case here... We saw the exact opposite. The one person who had nothing to do with the murders was the one who was being killed for it, and the one who did all the terrible stuff was getting away with a few years on, in prison. And at the same time, like you're saying, you know, Jamie Foxx's character, his goal should not have been, okay, let's get a deal, get people in prison, and call it a day. Your goal should have been, okay, these people committed very heinous acts, they need to pay for it. Yeah, and all he was after was a, what do they call it, a high conviction rate? Yeah. yeah because that, that's a corrupted way of thinking. Because probably throughout school, they're taught this. Mm -hmm. They're taught things like this. It's like, if you want to have a solid career, you need to go after these kind of numbers. Because numbers and pumping money through the system through those numbers is how you is how you get what you want. And that's a bad way of looking at it morally, too. Because you don't know if these people are guilty or innocent. Like the whole point is you're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. So if somebody came in who actually was innocent, and your whole thing is, well... I'm trying to keep up my conviction rate. You're going to do anything you can to put them in prison. Right. Rather than considering that maybe, oh, maybe they shouldn't be here. Maybe. And by the way, fam, I'm not a lawyer. I've never been to law school. So I'm only making speculation here as to what's being taught in law school. If what's being taught in, in my school about, you know, profits are what drive everything, mm -hmm. I don't see how the same thing isn't what's being insinuated in anywhere else. Law school, med school, whatever. So right. I'm just throwing that out there. But... Please correct me if I'm wrong. Well, but even if it's not taught in school, I guarantee you there are probably attorneys when, out there who teach that to their their new employees. Yeah, when you get it, it's like when you get into the real world, it's a business. Yeah. Straight up, no matter what, whether you're working for the government or not, it's a business. Mm -hmm. That's certainly how he was treating it. And, and I thought his uh, paralegal there was right to call him out on that and say, well, are we doing the right thing here? Did I give up a chance at a, fu at a, at a future with a family? All for a high conviction rate? It's like, that's not enough to live for. Yeah. Fortunately, she learned that lesson too late. Ten years too late. Yeah, but, you know, she's right to question it. Like you said, you you can't just go out here and worry about getting people in prison. You need yeah. to make sure that the law is being applied properly. Yeah. Because he had time to make a family, but she didn't, which means he was keeping her ass at work. Right. Doing stuff so he can go home. 
So. Well, even then, he wasn't doing much of that because he was missing his daughter's recitals. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I really appreciate the movie for the things that it questions mm -hmm. and that it brings out here because, yeah, it's like a good way to blow off steam about it all. Yeah. It's a good way of starting a moral dialogue about the legal system. Hopefully it does. I mean, it's been years now. Yeah. So, clearly, they're still doing what they're doing, but there's yeah. not a whole lot of Gerard Butlers out there that are, you know, CIA spooks that can get out there and devise up a way to make the guys kill themselves. <laughs> so. Yeah. I don't know how to say that. I don't know if it sh I should say that's unfortunate because he did kill a lot of people and a lot of people who probably didn't deserve to die necessarily. Sure. But then... Neither did his family. You have to ask the question, what does it take to get the kind of reform you need in the system? That's a good question because nobody learned their lesson even at the end of this. He just went back. Presumably he did as the acting DA, but everybody else either died or were just trying to keep going how they were going. A little adage there. Uh, sometimes if you can help even just one person, you've done the right, then you've done good. Mm -hmm. A hell of a way to go about it, but still. That had to be done, but but I mean, it points out that they're clearly, they're not capable of learning from their mistakes as a collective, so. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. All right, folks. Well, I'm sure we've left you so much to talk about. <laughs> so uh, by all means, get in there and give us a piece of your mind, guys. If you're interested in watching this movie right now, and this is a subject to change, it's available on Max. Or and that's HBO Max. It's just now Max. So by all means, go check it out, guys. It's also available on DVD and 4K and Blu-ray and whatever else you want to watch it on. Absolutely. I went and got it for you guys. Somebody said it's worth owning, so I went and got it. Yeah. So... There we go. Law-abiding citizen. If it's worth earning. It's a good drama. Hell yeah, I'm going to go watch that again. Actually, I get to watch it all the time I edit this thing. So <laughs> I'm going to watch it more times than I want. He's going to watch it five times a week. Oh yeah. But folks, as always, if you're brand new to this channel, I hope you'll consider subscribing and help our channel grow. While you're at it, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and hit the bell so you can receive notifications for whenever our next video drops. And should you feel compelled to give us a piece of your mind, please do so in the comments, guys. Also, take a look at us on our socials. We're on Instagram and TikTok. Come see what we're up to over there, guys. But until next time, this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Later, guys.